Prayer Circle, where broken hearts meet the healing hands of God. Prayer Circle starts now. Now, now. Good evening and welcome tonight to Prayer Circle. It's a joy to be with you. Thank you so much for taking time even to tune in. I can already see some already tuned in. Join Kitengela and others. This is Prayer Circle. It's your opportunity, your platform, your forum to share your testimony, to share your prayer request, to also get to hear others' experiences and be encouraged. So my name is Peter Karanja and it's a joy to host you. And this week we're exploring the parables of Jesus. We're just coming out of the Easter season and we are celebrating the victory that he secured for us. And we don't want it to be just a celebration and then it's one calendar event and life goes on. We want to be able to connect to what he has done so that it's manifest in our lives. How come after all this power that was shown in the resurrection, how is it that sometimes we still find ourselves struggling in certain areas? Are you like me? Are there things that you're saying, Lord, I need to build my faith in this? It seems so near and yet so far. I want to explore that and see what has God provided for us. So let me hear from you the areas that you're trusting God for, that you're saying, Lord, I want to build up towards this. Is it in the area of your health, in the area of your finances, relationships? We saw that yesterday. Someone said, I've been trusting God or desiring to enter into marriage and um, clock is ticking. Let's explore together. Let's pray together. Let's stand together. Let's dig into the scriptures and see what he has provided for your breakthrough. Praise the Lord. Remember, you can participate on WhatsApp 0786-316-316 and also on the SMS line. 20316. Text in and let me know where you're watching or listening from. Remember, we are coming to you live on Family TV and also on Radio 316. And guess what? Also on the app, the Family Media app, like just a short while back, I was seeing someone is tuned in from Australia. They were a good audience. They were listening and watching right here in Kenya, and they've relocated to Australia, and the app is serving them well. So please, if you haven't downloaded the app, please connect. You can watch previous programs. You can watch us online. Participate and let this be your opportunity because we're here for you and to see your faith grow. So why don't we start with a word of prayer as we thank God for what he wants to do in us and through us tonight. Let's bow down and pray. Father, we want to say thank you for the privilege to be here right here in this prayer circle. We know it's you that has created this opportunity. You are the initiator of prayer. You have invited us to pray. In fact, you said that men ought always to pray and not to faint. It's the antidote to giving up. It's the remedy to discouragement and to depression and to, to the discouragement of the enemy. An opportunity to connect to heaven. I pray that by your spirit you'll minister to each one of us tonight. And even those that may tune in later, we pray that the same spirit will be available for them to be uplifted, enlightened, encouraged by the spirit of the Lord. So thank you, Lord, as we explore the parables of Jesus about the kingdom of God. We welcome the kingdom. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I also want to thank the partners that are making this possible through your givings and through your prayers. I'll be giving you details about that, but please text in your prayer request and your thanksgiving it says enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. WhatsApp 0786-316-316 and also on SMS 20316. Active. Build your kingdom here. We're discussing the kingdom of God, especially on the back of the resurrection, on the back of Easter, we are celebrating not just Jesus going through the torture and the pain and resurrecting. And finally, we say, oh, well, he, a little seca, and then it just ends at that. No, it's supposed to be experienced. Experienced. You're supposed to experience the benefits of Easter and of the resurrection. So thank you so much. Even as you also text in and say, this is the area I'm trusting God to build my faith 
even so that I can grow and encounter victory. Remember, you can text it in on 20316 and also on WhatsApp 0786-316-316. And it will be a joy just to participate with you as we praise God and pray with you. I can see another one. This is from Persis. And you're saying, hello, Pastor. Join me in trusting God for a laptop and a phone. I preach online and my current phone has stopped. Then you say, long live prayer circle. God bless you, Persis. And may he provide for you even as you're continuing to serve him diligently. Brian, you're saying, I'm trusting God for peace of mind. I'm feeling so low in spirit and overstressed. Mm-hmm. Thank you for tuning in. I pray that even during this discussion, your spirit will be lifted. Join Kitangela. Thank you so much. Punctual as usual. Annie in Malawi says, Good evening, Pastor. I'm trusting God for healing. I'm going through health difficulties. I don't know how I can describe it. Annie, we hear you and we're standing together. That's why it's, we're here as prayer circle to pray with you, to connect our faith together because we know that Jesus is in the business of healing, of saving, of delivering. Praise the Lord. Mama Jay, good to have you on board. You're saying you're praying for all students that are traveling. Amen. Thank you so much. Well, we continue our discussion about the parables of Jesus. Have you ever asked yourself, why did Jesus have to use parables? And he himself explains it in Matthew chapter 13. We'll be checking that text even as we explore tonight the parable of the mustard seed. But it's good to know from the one that uses those parables why he used them. Matthew chapter 13 verse 11. Verse 10 says, His disciples came and asked him, Why do you always tell stories when you talk to the people? Then he explained to them, you have been permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others have not. To those who are open to my teaching, more understanding will be given, and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But to those who are not listening, even what they have will be taken away from them. Jesus is a wonderful teacher. So he has password protected the understanding of the kingdom based on our attitude and our approach to him. He says to those that are intent to understand, those that are thirsty for God, those that are seeking God in the, every area of their lives, he says, I use these parables and these stories so that you can gain understanding, access. But to those who are casual about me, who are casual about the kingdom, who have no business about it well, I tell them good stories and they go very happy. They heard about the parable of the sower. They heard about the mustard seed and it doesn't change their life. So he told them that's the key. Then for tonight, we look at the parable of the mustard seed. And it says in Matthew chapter 13 verse 31, here is another illustration Jesus used. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed planted in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of garden plants and grows into a tree where birds can come and find shelter in its branches. I had the opportunity to get hold of a mustard seed. Someone was teaching and I, got, I was in that forum. And they are so tiny, you can place them on the palm of your hand. And in case you want to have a closer look at them, just your breath will blow it away. <laughs> you will wonder, I thought I had a seed in my hand. And next, it's gone and you can't see it on the ground. It's so tiny, so, so tiny, smaller than a pea by many, 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 many times. It's almost like the size of the pinhead of a little pin. But the Bible is telling us, although it is that small, but when it is planted, it grows up into the largest of garden plants and it becomes a tree where the birds of the air can find shelter. Think about that. Yesterday, we were also talking about, you know, the parable of the sower, the farmer, and is my farmer tuned in today? Hey, farmer. Are you there? Wave and tell us you are present. You know, the farmer knows that the key 
of the seed is planting it. And number two, planting it in the right environment. I, I can't overemphasize this. God's word is the seed. Luke chapter 8 verse 11 tells us the seed is the word of God. So the, it's not about the physical size. It's about the potential inside the seed. Some of us are looking for more word, as it were. It's not in the quantity. It's a recognition of the quality. That that scripture you had 10 years ago, that prophecy you had, that prayer that you're praying based on the scripture, that is the power of God for transformation. Praise the Lord. And that's why tonight... I'm asking you, what area are you trusting God for and saying, God, I am building my faith in this area so that we can begin to plant the seed of God's word in that area. If you're praying for health, text me and tell me I'm standing on this scripture. I am building and brooding my faith on this scripture. Hallelujah. I see a text from Jeremy. You're saying, I'm praying for work. I have not been working for four years. I get a job, I get fired in less than a year or in just months. Number two, I'm also praying to be reunited with my daughter. It's been four years since I saw her and I'm broken. Jeremy, we are praying with you. And if you have a scripture for Jeremy, please text it in. Remember, we are a prayer circle holding hands virtually and speaking victory in the word of God. Praise the Lord. The victory is in the word. The parable of the mustard seed. As we continue pondering about that, this one says, Good evening, prayer circle family. Thanking God for so much he has done in my life and also praying concerning an unspoken prayer request. Thank you so much. Uh, Sharon in Kisumu was saying, Help me pray concerning bad temper. Mm -hmm. You're desiring to reflect Christ in your life. As you listen to those requests, what is the scripture you're also sending in to encourage them? Duncan in Kisumu also tuned in, praying for the sick all over the nation. Tonight, I really want to challenge us, attach it to the scripture. Because that is the seed, that's the power. Thank you, Caroline. You're saying, praise God, Pastor Peter. Pray for my son, David, to know Christ personally. Amen and amen. Another says, may the scripture is standing on in Psalms chapter 20, verse 5. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Powerful. And thank you so much. That's Ray in Mombasa. God bless you so much. We're talking about the power in the seed. Jesus tells us, the kingdom of heaven is like. So he's, now let's get back. He's trying to communicate or he is communicating the secrets or the truths of the kingdom of heaven. Let me ask you, anytime you hear the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, do you sometimes think about futuristic appearance? when we die and go into the kingdom. Many think about it as something in the future. But Jesus, when he was preaching here on earth, he said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was saying, it's not something we are going to later. It is something that is here with us. I have come to usher it in, to open the portal, the access, the entry into the kingdom. Now, before we take for granted those words, what does it mean? Kingdom. Mm -hmm. We live in a democracy, so we are not quite used to kingdoms. Prior to colonial intervention, prior to colonialism, we had kingdoms. We had the kingdom of the Wanga. We had different kingdoms here in Kenya and in Africa. We, we talk about the Ashanti kingdom in the areas in West Africa, in Ghana, in Nigeria, all those kingdoms, and some still have that. And in next to us, the Baganda kingdom in Uganda. But we have grown, many of us have grown under democracy. So kingship and the, pol the, the, the whole aspect of kings is a bit foreign to us. But that word kingdom, the domain 
of the king. Who is the king in this context? Because Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. It's talking about the rulership of God, the king of kings, God, the owner, the creator, the maker of heaven and earth. So Jesus was saying, I have come to usher in the culture, the, the person, the experience of God, who is the overall king of kings, lord of lords. And he now compares it to the mustard seed. And he says, it begins small. Some of us got born again recently, and you're still struggling with things. And maybe even as you text me, you're saying, Peter, help me. I'm praying concerning my bad temper. And sometimes the enemy makes you think that mm, you're doing poorly. Maybe you're not born again. But here's the word. Let the kingdom grow. Let it grow and take root. And it overrides and overruns every other thing and becomes big. And it can carry the weight of those other issues. Well, we'll be exploring more about the kingdom of God. I want to hear from you what area that you're trusting God for the kingdom to take its full manifestation. Is it in your health, your relationship, your finances? Let's pray together. And if there are people you want to encourage right here, please text in even the scripture that you'd like us to pray together. This is Prayer Circle and it's a joy to be with you. Let's take this. Matthew West, they are encouraging us. Just like Jesus said, don't stop praying. Luke chapter 18 verse 1, that men ought always to pray and not faint. And this is what Prayer Circle is about. So we want to pray with you. We want to stand with you because he has commanded us not to stop praying. Why? Because prayer is a fruitful engagement. It's not just telling God our wishes and hoping someone out there in the celestial clouds will hear us or not hear us. Prayer is based on his promise. First John chapter 5 verse 14 and 15 tells us that if this is the confidence that we have in prayer, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, then we have whatsoever we have asked of him. So that's why I encourage us, base your prayer on the word. Stand on the word because this is the confidence we have. Praying according to his will, he hears us. Is it his will for our healing? Find it in the scripture and say, I'm trusting God for healing. Amen. This one says, Pastor, I'm praying for everybody who is sick. Kamasasa, Daktari, Hawako, Job. You can imagine when the doctors are on strike and someone needs attention. Let's also pray that that may be resolved in Jesus' name. Joshua is praying for your sick, who's, your friend who's been sick, taken to the ICU right now. Uh, you're able to talk to her, just glad that God has shown his gracious hand till now. And you're standing on Psalms 71, 20 to 21, and in just about a minute we'll be praying together. You say, you have made me see many troubles and calamities, but you will revive me again. From the depths of the earth, you bring me up again. You will increase my greatness and comfort me again. Amen. Thank you so much for standing on that scripture. And let that, let that also encourage anyone else trusting God for healing. Farmer, thank you because you're present and you're standing on Psalms chapter 20, 62 verse 4. Thank you so much. Now that saying, I'm standing for my marriage, trusting God to connect me to my destined husband. Standing on faith, in faith on Isaiah chapter 34 verse 16. And you know what it says? None shall lack her mate. Duncan in Kisumu, praying that you, even as you turn 41, may God, tomorrow, happy birthday in advance, God to guide you in all your ways. And I have others that had sent in the partners. Ayub is requesting for prayer to get your family and your job back. You faced depression and you lost everything. Let's pray and join Ayub in praying for restoration, both physical and financial and mental in Jesus' name. Margaret is praying for your husband and your children to get employment. Let's stand together with her. Karen has sent several prayer requests, trusting God for marriage. You are 51 and we are trusting. And may that scripture in Isaiah 34 verse 16 encourage you. You've also been working in an organization for 30 years. Since the time you left school, you're trusting God for grace, enlargement, expansion, for salvation of your elderly 
elderly parents and good health for both of them. They've been having hypertension for also your nephew's salvation because he's been ad- abusing drugs. And also for the salvation of your siblings, one who is married to someone of a different faith. Faith says, it's been years since I buried mom, but I can't stop grieving. You've been grieving her loss. We're praying for comfort in the name of Jesus. Leah is also feeling overwhelmed, saying, please pray for me. And Phoebe, you've been waiting on God for a job and they're saying, please pray for me. I feel forgotten. I think this is a good time for us to pray together as a family. No matter what your request is, can you let's join together in prayer and trust God. In Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Our Father, we want to say thank you because you are the living God. The resurrection reminds us that our faith is built on one who is an ever-present help in time of trouble. So we are not chancing about our prayers. We are praying to the God who hears and answers prayer. In fact, the God who delights in answering our prayers. There are so many prayer requests that we present before you today, but we know they cannot overwhelm you. Thank you because you have called us by name. So it's not the multiplicity of the requests that confuses you. No, you know each one of us and the greatest scope and dimension of our requests more than we could ask or imagine. For this dear one that is still grieving the loss of a loved one and finds it hard to get over it, we pray for comfort. We pray for healing of her heart and his heart. We pray that, Lord, you're able to speak comfort because you are the father to the fatherless. You're the husband to the widow. You're the one that strengthens us and stands with us. May she find comfort even as she looks back and realizes you are the giver of life and you give her the opportunity to relate with that parent, that mother, that father for that period of time. And may they continue with a good legacy even in honor of them. Praying for this dear one that has been working for many years and they desire expansion, enlargement, increase and you are the one that is able I pray that you may come through for them and even as they pray for their parents for healing, even as they age gracefully, we pray that it will not be a daily struggle with sickness and disease. And even at this time, we remember the many that are struggling with one issue or another in the area of their health, physical health and emotional health, mental health. We pray that God, you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth us. You said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I pray that we may experience healing tonight. That area that has been stubborn and resisting a change, may there be a breakthrough now in the name of Jesus. May they begin to experience a turnaround, reparation, recovery in the name of Jesus. This dear one that has been out of a job and experiencing job loss over and over again. We pray for a breakage of that trend in the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy has sent against them, let it be broken and aborted tonight in Jesus' name. And let them experience fruitfulness in the work of their hands. You said in Deuteronomy 33 that of Asher, let his hands be sufficient for him. We pray let his hands be sufficient and bring fruitfulness in the work of their hands, in the work of their mind, ideas, creativity, innovation, business ideas, employment ideas, value addition in whether in employment or deployment, fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. For a business that is struggling tonight, we pray for breakthrough. We pray for wisdom. You are not limited by the economy. And we we want to say thank you because of the changes we are seeing in the the Kenya shilling. But we are praying much more. Let the change also be within us for growth, increase, and enlargement in the name of Jesus. So we say thank you for salvation of souls. This one that is praying for Carol who is praying for David, her son, for salvation. 
may you draw him to yourself in a personal way this season. And this other one that the sibling has gotten married to a person of another faith. You're able to save them. Not just the sibling, but both of them, the entire family, because Jesus is a savior of the world. We thank you even as we continue to listen to the music and to worship together and to pray together. Give us greater understanding and breakthrough. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. And thank you so much. Even those partners that have tuned in, you too can also be a partner. Praise the Lord. It's not difficult. It's not a specific amount. It's whatever you have. If you go to your M-Pesa pay bill, 316, 316, and you can just, uh, the account name is TBN Family Media. M-Pesa, the pay bill is 316, 316. The account name, TBN Family Media. And give whatever you have. It is going to support the expansion and the sustenance of the ministry so that we can reach and enrich others. Another is saying, I'm thanking Family Media for being such an inspiration in my life and also praying for your TSC number to come out. It's taken so long. God bless you so much. Uh, this one is about the signal in Malindi. We'll also pray that we get a speedy resolution about that. God bless you. Amen. You are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Remember, we are talking about Jesus teaching us on the kingdom of God. And tonight, as we continue, we have been looking at the parables of Jesus Christ, the illustrations that he uses, the stories that are simple, applicable, contextualized. Did you notice that when he was talking to an agrarian society or an agrarian people, he would give parables that relate to the agriculture? He talks about the parable of the mustard seed. There are people that keep using seed. There are people that keep planting. The parable of the sower, he would be speaking about a planting engagement. Then he would be talking to Peter and the others, the James and John, the fishermen, sons of Zebedee, and he'll be talking and say, I will make you fishers of men not planters of crops. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When he was relevant, there's a lot we can learn about Jesus teaching ministry. It's, it's beautiful. He comes to Peter, he tells him, fishers of men. Because if he told him, farmer, he'll say, hey, Jesus, you've thrown me off course. By the time I learn how to plant, how to prepare the ground, I think I'll delay the mission. But when he tells them, fishers of men, they can relate. When he's talking about farmers, the kingdom is like seed. And they can mentally picture the seed going into the ground and enlarging and expanding and becoming the garden plant and a tree. And they can picture the birds coming around. Praise the Lord. This one says, good evening, Pastor Peter. I thank God for my family and my partner. I pray for God's favor in the month of April for my visa application to go well and to be successful. I have faith that all will work according to God's will. This is Ashley also praying for healing for all that are unwell. God bless you so much. Thank you, Ashley. Philip tuned in from Meru and you are enjoying the show. Karibu sana, Shenika. Saying, I'm grateful to God for strength at work, for journey mercies and providence. I pray for financial stability and spiritual growth because of a big decision I'm about to make. Blessings and God bless you. Thank you. And may God give you wisdom as you make that decision. Desmond Des from Larry, you're tuned in, you're praising God for answered prayer. Amen. Now they're saying, I'm praying for my marriage. We are struggling so much. May God restore our trust to each other. Mm -hmm. Another says, good evening, prayer circle. Simon in Kiambu County, kindly pray for this precious friend. First for my mom, Fidelis, who's admitted at the hospital. Pray for quick recovery in Jesus' mighty name. Secondly, pray for her precious son to be saved and to be delivered from bad company and drugs. He's saying, I sent a prayer request concerning finances and I had a big debt, and today, rejoice with me, the Lord Jesus has answered that prayer, and the debt is fully paid. Amen and amen. God bless you so much. And you're saying praise the Lord for his gracious provision, 
so, so, so much. Well, I want us to just speak about two things that have come up yesterday and today. One said, I'm turning 44. And I'm trusting God to settle in marriage. Another also said today, I'm turning 51. I'm trusting God for settlement in marriage. I want you to encourage them. What scripture can they stand on? What word can you stand on? Maybe you too have experienced such a season where age seemed to be advancing and the mockery and the ridicule and the hopelessness. What is your experience? What can you tell them so that as they stand on the word, the waves of discouragement that come, they can stand on the scripture and say, excuse me, God's word is real and I'm standing on it. There's a scripture that I saw sent in Isaiah chapter 34. I'm going to read it for us. Isaiah 34. Meantime, you can also text in your encouragement. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Not necessarily written concerning marriage, but applicable as you pray. It says, search the book of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's where you start. And see what he will do. He will not miss a single detail. Not one of these birds and animals will be missing and none will lack a mate. For the Lord has promised this, his spirit will make it all come true. I'm getting excited because it puts it so clearly for you. He says that as you search the book, you will find it. Not a single detail will be missing. And now, if the animals and the birds themselves will not lack a mate, how much more you? The Bible says, if he takes care of the sparrow, how much more value do you have? He says, none will lack a mate. Why? Because the Lord has promised this, and his spirit will make it all come true. As we come to, towards the close, I want you to connect your prayer request with a scripture. What is your prayer request and what is the scripture that you're saying, Lord, you have promised this. Your spirit will bring it to pass. That is the strength of our prayer. I've given you that scripture, Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. What is yours? Uh, this one says, thank God for the gift of Easter, all my sins are cleansed in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Trusting God for a job opening, for a funder, and for favor and success upon my children's education and well-being. Standing on Isaiah chapter 41, verse 15. And this is what it says. Behold, I will make you a new, sharp, threshing instrument, having teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff. That's Lydia. Thank you so much. And it's an encouragement to us. What is it that seems to be a mountain? God is saying, it's not that the mountain is disappearing. I am making you a new threshing instrument. You will beat down the mountain. Wow. It's exciting because many of us are praying, God, take away the mountain. God's business, he's saying, I will strengthen you greater than that mountain. Ashley, you're standing on the scripture, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 22. It says, when the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. <laughs> Beautiful. When the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. In spite of everything that seems so difficult, age notwithstanding, financial situation notwithstanding, how long you've waited notwithstanding, he says, I, the Lord, will make it happen. Thank you so much, Ashley. Uh, this one says, please remember me in prayer. That is Dongo. God bless you. Didn't specify exactly what, but we're standing with you in prayer. Praise God. Please pray for my family that God will open my womb like he did for Hannah. My marriage is on the rocks. Oh God, if you could hear my cry and bless me with a baby, peace will be in this home. That's a deep cry. Can we encourage this dear one with the scripture? 
what scripture can she stand with and can we stand with her about the fruit of the womb the marriage is facing a challenge but god is faithful text me a scripture that we can also stand on and see god come to pass this one says my mom is in a coma and has been given a week to live we reject the spirit of death in jesus name Hallelujah. We refuse. It's not going to be a week to live. The scripture that says, with long life will I satisfy you and show me, show you my salvation. That's in the book of Psalms chapter 91. We're going to refer to it shortly. We're going to stand. That report of death is canceled in Jesus' name. And not just for you, but for anyone else who's been given such a dire report. Here's encouragement. I encourage that person by saying that Abraham considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb or his own body now dead, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. That's the book of Romans chapter 4 from verse 16. You encourage as you wait for the fruit of the womb. Look at Abraham. Considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb. It was as good as dead. At 90 years old. No, his own body now dead. It was, a, it was beyond recovery. But God came through for them. And I believe he's coming through for you. Let's look at that scripture. And see, this other one says, pray with my family. Sometimes I find it hard to pray. I lack the word. I feel I don't even know how to speak to our God. Every time I try, it's like I'm not worthy to do so. Someone there that needs an encouragement. May the scripture tell you that as you pray according to his will, he hears you. Alice is saying, I'm trusting God for deployment into a new work area. Without giving a bribe, promotion is my portion in Jesus' name. Amen. And you're standing on 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, and let that encourage each one with a similar situation. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. Powerful word there. Thank you so much. Another says, pray for me. I'm down. Looking for encouragement. May the, God minister, may the Lord God minister strength and encouragement to your heart. Hallelujah. Let's look at the scripture even as you text in. This one that's been given a short time to live. Psalms chapter 91. The God who hears and answers prayer. Psalm 91. Let's quickly see it. It says, he that dwells in the secret place. I love the King James. Permit me to use it. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. That is now talking about you speaking God's word. Your situation is dire. The job situation is dire. The doctor's report is dire. It's negative. But the psalmist says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. My God in whom I'll trust. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall trust. His truth, scripture, shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, of the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near your dwelling. I want you to pray this prayer as you pray. I want us to use this scripture that, Lord, I am saying of you, you are my refuge, you are my fortress, my God in whom I trust. It says, only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Verse 9, because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, your habitation, 
there shall no evil befall you. I thought I heard your amen. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up on their hands. You shall not dash your foot against a stone. And this is the scripture I get to. Because you have set your love upon me, says the Lord, therefore I will deliver you. I will set you on high because you have known by name. Mm. It's time for us shortly to pray, but I want you to stand on that scripture. This one says, pray for God's provision for our family. Our dad went through head operation last week. We need 300000 to pay for the hospital bills. It's not easy. Let's pray that Shadrach, we're standing together with you. Another says, remember me in prayers for financial breakthrough and to clear my debts. That's Wanjiko. May he remember you. Alice, standing on Exodus 15, 26, praying for restoration of your health. And the Lord is able. Hallelujah. Let's join together as we pray. And remember that scripture we have read in Psalms chapter 91. He says, Lord, because you are, we have made you our refuge, because you are the one saying we have known your name, you will rescue us and set us on high. Let's join together with all these prayer, script, you know, prayer requests. Let's pray together as we close. Our Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you for the opportunity to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. This would not be possible if our sins had not been washed away. This is the benefit of Easter, the benefits of Calvary, that we can dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Thank you because we are no longer strangers and aliens. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And we have an inheritance in the kingdom of God. We do not come timidly. We do not come with condemnation. We come confidently. You told us, let us come boldly. Let us come confidently to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So tonight, here we are, we present our hearts to you. We are in need of mercy. There are many things that have come either by our doing or by human error or by human weakness and limitations by virtue of our humanity. We seek your mercy. Lord, remember us. There are things we don't deserve, but your mercy is able to cause us to experience them. There are judgments we actually deserve, but your mercy is able to avert this judgment because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Here is a sentence that has been given. A mother who has been told she has one week to live. Medically, that's the fact. But spiritually, we engage the mercy of God to intervene and break that evil that is at work in her body and bring restoration in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that is working against her, whether it's a cancer, whatever malfunction, by the Spirit of the Lord, bring healing and restoration in Jesus' name. She shall not live just one week, but with long life will you satisfy her and show her your salvation. And we shall testify, not just for one year, not just for ten years, but for many years to come of the faithfulness of God. Let turn this into a testimony in the name of Jesus. He is our dear sister trusting you for the fruit of the womb and the marriages facing such strain and tension. You're the giver of children. You said children are a heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. She belongs to you, so she deserves an inheritance in you. It's not by power, it's not by might, it's by the Spirit of the Lord. We release fruitfulness in the name of Jesus for a testimony unto you. And the same way Elisha said that this time in the coming year, let there be testimony. Let that be also their story 
in the name of Jesus. Concerning the work of our hands, jobs, businesses, access, opportunity for income, release your favor and productivity and open doors to each one that is desiring this. We say thank you for doing it for us and continue to glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. It's been a pleasure just being with you right here on this forum. Remember, you can always participate and get more on the Family Media app. You can re-listen, re-watch, and connect. And in the morning, Jam 316, talking about the characters around the cross with Pastor Jemo. Connect to that. Let it build your faith. So from all of us and from me here, God bless you and be victorious. Good night. Prayer Circle, where broken hearts meet the healing hand.